So as we look at this comment here that's from IHG's website, we see that climate change is one of the biggest business challenges facing industry today. And as we think about that, really the hotel and tourism industry is the largest global industry. Our, our companies are reaching globally. We are the largest neighbor in the neighborhood. So when we see the challenges that are being presented to bring about change, to balance that with business expectations and the bottom line, this is a real area of interest and concern that we have. In fact, to kind of set the tone, we'd like to ask a poll question here. And we have four hotels, and we'd be interested to see what uh, everyone views these or, or how they would view these as being green properties, green hotels. So Rob, can we bring up the poll question? And if you would, please identify which properties you feel are green in looking at these four hotels from around the world. All right. The answer actually is all four of them. These are four of the top, the four top rated green hotels. And as we consider these, might not be very surprising as we look at the, uh, the Eco Camp Patagonia or the Bangkok Treehouse, those would seem pretty obvious. But in addition to that, Hotel Carlton of San Francisco and the Grand Hyatt of Dubai are also ranked at the very top of green hotels. So why is that? We're going to find out many reasons, but in part, one significant reason is the use of renewable energy. Both Hotel Carlton and Grand Hyatt have extensive solar panels for energy, as well as uh, water conservation um, and reuse systems that actually reduce uh, the, in the Hyatt's case, over five, excuse me, 800,000 gallons a week it saves them. So there are things that are being really done to improve the overall health of our environment and the bottom line as far as green initiatives are concerned. So let's take a look at what our webinar is today. We're going to begin by talking about what the global picture is and getting a sense of that. We're also going to take a look at what hospitality is already doing, because in fact, there's a lot of progress in our industry. But then we need to see where do we go from here, and how do we uh, reduce costs, looking at the health of our bottom line, what are our options, and we're going to look at a couple of key areas, such as renewable energy, retrofitting and rebates, and targeting a zero waste world. Then we're also going to look at the marketing side, because in addition to controlling costs and reducing consumption, we also want to take advantage of generating new business and bringing in more revenue. And then we'll conclude with the message. So let's start with the global picture, the facts. Recently, a UN report came out. We've seen quite a bit of this in the news. In fact, here's some excerpts from uh, BBC News just a few days ago. And the headline was, World Must End Dirty Fuel Use. And it talked about how climate change is impacting the world and how the adaptation must be taken into account. And it pointed out that some of the most at-risk industries are going to be those that are coastal. Now, if we think about it, a lot of our hotels are coastal properties. In fact, there was a map here, if you notice on the right-hand side of your screen, that identified the top 10 cities with, that were projected to have the highest annual flood cost by 2050. Now, if you look at North America, you'll notice three of those cities being New York, Miami, and New Orleans, all around $2 billion annual flood costs associated. You think about the number of hotels that are part of this picture. This is something that we really have to look at and, and be prepared for, but also do what we can now to to protect our investments and our assets. 
we have um, a comment here from Energy Star that's talking about the LEAD program in the hospitality industry and why our industry is so important in this picture. In the United States alone, hotels represent more than 5 billion square feet of space and close to 4 billion in annual energy use. Business meetings contribute to a $175 billion industry. We are a, the neighborhood's biggest neighbor, and we really need to be prepared now for our own assets as well as the overall uh, scope of, of the direction that climate change is headed. Now, why is this so beneficial to our buildings? Well, the fact of the matter is that green buildings, on average, use 26% less energy. They emit 33% less carbon dioxide, use 30% less indoor water, and send 50 to 75 less solid waste to landfills and, and incinerators. So if we stop and think about that, what a significant impact that has on our bottom line and having a cost-managed um, system in place in addition to benefiting the neighborhood that we live in. Dan, do we have you back? No. Are you there, Naomi? Can you hear me? Yes, I sure can. Welcome back. Thank you. Sorry about that. The technical difficulties. That's okay. So we are just chatting about, about to go into what hospitality is already doing, but before we do, any thoughts on the current state of what um, the, the re between the recent UN and other news factors that are showing what's taking place with the climate? Well, certainly this is a great opportunity for the hospitality industry. You know, typically energy is one of the biggest costs of any hotel's budget. And so anything that one can do to reduce energy consumption, um, there's a great opportunity to improve the bottom line. We see that um, industries all around are looking for ways to reduce their energy consumption and to take advantage of alternative fuels or alternative energy. So wind, uh, power, solar, these are some things that are emerging. Um, and there are some great opportunities for hospitality companies to lead the, the charge in these new energy sources. And it makes sense. You know, the hospitality industry is so dependent on its natural environments and surroundings, and it's got to think about how can it help to preserve or sustain these environments. Excellent. And like we said, you know, a lot of progress has been made. And we're seeing significant accomplishments by several of the leading global brands. So let's take a look and see what some examples of what hospitality is already doing. So here we have a snapshot from IHG. And in doing the research and preparation for today's presentation, one of the things that really jumped out to me personally was the extent that the, the large brands have gone to to really start to make an impact and that is very commendable and something to be very proud of. Uh, we realize it's not just the branded properties, but also the independents. And we'll take a look at some of those examples a little later. But what I really liked with this particular website, here at IHG, very clearly, very plainly, they're showing us exactly what their carbon footprint is. Now imagine, just imagine, that this becomes part of a traveler's decision-making process. What is the rate of the pr property? What's the location? How many stars does it have? How many amenities? Oh, and what's your carbon footprint? This is becoming more and more on the minds of people. And as we talk about marketing a little later, we see that this sort of information is something that travelers want to know. And Dan, I believe that's something that you have really seen as well in your studies and research. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we've got a lot of um, consumers now that when they shop for products and services, they are looking at what companies are doing and how environmentally friendly or responsible these companies are. I can tell you, uh, particularly in the, the meetings space, meetings events, meeting planners include this in their RFPs. You know, just a few years ago, the city of Denver was fortunate enough to win the nod to host the Democratic National Convention. And it was no easy feat for the city to win that, but as part of 
winning that business, the city had to show all of these different environmentally friendly initiatives that it, it had taken on. Um, and the good news is the city stepped up and took these on, and the even better news is that these practice, practices continue to this day long after that event has come and gone. So um, these are becoming staples in many of re the requests for proposal. Um, but when you look at the younger generation consumers, particularly the millennials, uh, environment is a very important issue to them. They are looking at how um, sustainable properties are in making their decisions. So it's something that hotel companies uh, need to pay attention to. The good news is they are taking big steps forward, um, but it's something that we think there are even greater opportunities for uh, companies to take uh, responsibility and, and, and be the leaders in this space. Thank you, Dan. And, and we're going to take a look at some exact scenarios within the meeting world itself, as well as additional marketing um, opportunities that relate to that. Let's take a little bit more of a look of some of the things that the industry is already doing. This comes from the Hilton website, some things that are very significant. You take a look at the amount of savings that they experienced in uh, utility costs. If you look at just the year 2012, over $250 million in utility cost savings. What a strong uh, voice for putting into place energy control. And a lot of theirs came from green power. If you notice at the top here, with what they were able to purchase with green power actually related, or equated to 94% of the annual electricity use in their own hotels in the US, that equated to avoiding an estimated 80 million tons of carbon dioxide or the emissions of 43,000 passenger cars. So what a, full, a terrific step forward the industry is taking. We, if we look across the brands, this is kind of a snapshot because all of the companies are really looking to make impact on reduction of energy consumption, water consumption, the carbon footprint, and the waste output. So as we look at it, this chart will give you a kind of a, a base uh, comparison as to what the leading brands are doing, uh, what their goals are. Most are looking to c reduce these categories by an average of 20% by 2020. Some are a bit more aggressive, uh, some have shorter timelines, but the terrific thing is that most of the websites have this information readily available and, and are keeping the, the progress transparent and communicating it. We really appreciate that. Uh, another area, that, on, and specifically with that category of waste reduction, this is an interesting uh, c category. Um, eliminating waste and what it goes into the landfills each year, this is a big part of it. There's a program called Clean the World, and we see IHG has about 160 properties participating in the program. And in 2012, Marriott became actually their first hotel partner for Clean the World, and this organization is a nonprofit that collects and recycles partially used soap and other amenities from the guest room and are able to re-avail uh, those to communities around the world. So in 2012, or at this point, they had over, Marriott had over 47,000 rooms participating, making them the number one chain for clean the world, in the Clean the World portfolio. They've contributed to collecting over 75,000 pounds of soap and 50,000 pounds of amenities. We have an example just from one particular hotel here in the Orlando area, and the impact that that has had, uh, not only averting um, and diverting waste, but creating 83,000 plus new bars of soap. So it's a terrific program that addresses two things, eliminating waste and generating a positive uh, step forward. But the question really is, where do we go from here? With all of those phenomenal numbers, we might think, okay, we're there. But in reality, we have to keep going. We can't look back. Now, why is that? Let's take a look at some of those numbers, but in comparison. Again, we commend and applaud and are deeply appreciative of all the steps that the companies are taking. But let's take a look at these kind of in proportion and focus on what we can still do. Energy Star has a chart that shows certification by building type. And right now, hotels sit at 2%. While there are definite ch challenges that prevent hotels from becoming certified, 
it certainly indicates that we still have a ways to go and that there are things we can be doing. We take a look at the Clean the World program. That 47,000 rooms is, is wonderful, but when we compare it to having over 530,000 rooms in North America, clearly there's still opportunities for us to go. IHG Green Engage, they have over 2,600 properties, more than 50% of their properties participating out of their 4,600. Best Western has uh, over 1,100 out of their 4,000 properties with the green icon around the world. We see Hyatt of their 500 plus hotels. Um, over 90% are installing energy efficient lighting as well as water efficient fixtures. 35% um, have installed an energy management system that helps to control the guest room stats or thermostat temperatures after the guest checkout. And for Hilton and their program, they have a, almost 2,300 of their 4,000 participating in the programs. What I really appreciate that, that Hilton also includes on their website is the fact that as a global brand, they are representing a wide range of climates around the world. And so as a result, their sustainability strategy has to be flexible to take into account a wide span of variables. So there are not one size fits all. When we go around the globe and we look at the different environments and, and circumstances of the properties, we recognize there are challenges and there are things that, um, some things that are going to apply and some things that will not. But when we look at these numbers, what we want to focus on is what else can we be doing? What more can we do? And that's what these numbers really tell, tell us. So with that in mind, what do we do next? What is next on the agenda? What's coming up? So as Dan brought out earlier, renewable energy, that's a big one. If that's not an option at this point, perhaps retrofitting is, and we're going to see some nice examples where rebates make that really feasible for, for hotels. And then finally, a target of waste, zero waste world. So let's talk about renewable energies. This is truly something that is right around the corner. We talked about the top green hotels uh, at the outset and how solar power is playing a real significant role in that. The article that just came out in BBC News this last week, World Must End Dirty Fuel Use, essentially shows that in order to achieve the objectives that have been outlined in the UN report, carbon emissions by 2050 need to be 40 to 70 percent lower than they were in 2010. Now, if you recall back to the chart that we looked at, most companies currently are looking at a 2007 or 2008 baseline. That means moving forward, we have to be looking at the 2010 numbers and achieve 40 to 70 percent less from those. They have a very strong statement that basically tells us there needs to be a massive shift away from fossil fuels and investments need to shift to going 100 percent clean as fast as possible. So how are hotels on this? Uh, addressing this and how are they doing this? Well, we are seeing an, in, an uptick in solar power and renewable energies. Dan, could you please talk to us about the examples we have here and some of the examples you've seen? Sure. You know, I can tell you in where I live in Denver, Colorado, um, there are all kinds of initiatives underway both in the private sector as well as the public sector in terms of embracing alternative energies. Um, one most visible uh, to people coming into the region, uh, particularly if they fly into our Denver International Airport, they will see outside a um, very um, sizable solar farm um, collecting solar energy to help run the, the lights, the heating and ventilation, air conditioning systems throughout the airport, which is pretty impressive. Um, you know, there are more and more companies that are uh, developing wind power, wind farms, and uh, making that energy available to hotels and other hospitality entities. I think when you look at um, where a lot of the world's supply of hospitality venues are, Many are in places where there's a wealth of sun. So for example, just in the United States, if you pick places like Arizona, California, 
Colorado. Um, and yet we don't seem to be really taking full advantage of that natural energy that's out there. And I think that if we, uh, particularly with new construction, start building with solar in mind, um, many skyscrapers that are going up, you know, putting perhaps some of these wind turbines on top of the, the roofs to help generate power. There's some great opportunities which then would not only protect the environment but ultimately result in cost savings for the hospitality organization. So these are just a few examples of what's happening in some pockets here in the United States. If you look around the world, there are many great examples where um, in other countries and cultures um, they've taken even more of a proactive stance in terms of trying to harness uh, the environment and find other ways to um, protect it and save on energy costs. And with these numbers here that we see here, Dan, it truly is significant. Uh, one of the examples, their solar power has contributed to 40 to 80 percent of their requirements. Uh, the Hyatt and Marriott. Well, it's very important to emphasize the dollars and cents behind this. These are, are really significant cost savings that are improving the bottom line, and and we need to you know recognize that. So there's you know multiple wins here, doing good for the environment, but doing good for the the bottom line, which ultimately um, impresses the shareholders or the investors. That's important as well. So um, it's a double win. Absolutely. So this might be something that perhaps our audience today is beginning to think about or is starting to uh, consider at a, more, at a more serious degree. But if we don't have the opportunity to do this today, there are other options. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about thermostat for a moment. This is a simple way to conserve energy and reduce the amount of energy demand in a very simple way. Uh, we might not be able to put in renewable energy at this point, but can we make sure that we're using more efficient use and consumption of our energy? And smart thermostats have come a long way. I was recently at a hotel in Las Vegas, and they had put in tremendous renovation into this property, phenomenal rooms, amazing uh, amazing design, decor, amenities, and the thermostats on the walls were the old-fashioned high, low, on, off. And to see that when we have options like this today is it's it's a, a draw against uh, the hotel's bottom line as well as making uh, in con raising the energy demands that they have. We have a simple example here of a 205-room hotel in, um, in, in this example, that they had a savings of $138,000 in five years. And they, their ROI with this product was, was, it less, uh, was as low as a year. So very quickly, they can recoup their money and have substantial savings ongoing. It is how it, it is quite educational you're able to see a savings calculator and actually put in and get a sense for your particular property, selecting the type of property, entering your monthly bill, your number of rooms, and your zone, and actually be able to calculate your savings. In addition to that, there's a terrific map that shows what hotels using these systems are saving. So again, when we think about the role of hospitality as the biggest neighbor in, on the block, how do we contribute to the overall picture and reduce our consumption by some 40 percent. So a very simple way to do this. In addition to that are the rebate programs. And, and Dan, I'm going to talk about this slide and then if you could join, rejoin the conversation and talk about some of these simpler re retrofitting options and the impact they have. But just as an example, when it comes to rebates, a lot of the utility companies offer terrific incentives that may cover 50% or more of the total system costs. So here's one example of a 222 California room hotel. They actually, it covered the entire investment. They had no out-of-pocket costs and saved over 40% of their energy consumption moving forward. 
So there are terrific options that can audit your overall standing of where your property is at, where your vulnerabilities are, where your greatest gains will be for taking advantage of some of these options, and then match a property with the right product, with the right programs, and the right rebates, and really create an overall package that works well. There's so many layers to, to retrofitting and, and to moving forward into the green that working with a, um, a coach, we have an example here of, of tech360.org that does this, and it really is a successful path for hoteliers trying to become even more green. Dan? Well, it's great to think about the different rebates, you know, and they're not just on things like thermostats. I want to um, underscore that other, comp you know, any type of utility. So uh, there are a lot of savings or rebates that could be had for using, for example, water efficient devices, using possibly um, better energy saving light bulbs as well as the thermostats and things like those. So, you know, keep your eyes open for these opportunities because um, basically the utility companies want to help partner. Sometimes there are also tax incentives by the, the local, state, or uh, federal government for putting in different energy saving or, or um, utility saving devices. So these are things to think about. And just on a side note, um, for each of you personally, some of these opportunities may exist in your own homes. I can tell you from my perspective, I have um, purchased water-saving toilets, um, more sophisticated sprinkler management systems, and I have gotten rebates from my local utility companies because I am doing efforts to uh, conserve water consumption or energy. So those are some things to think about. This could also help you personally as well as your organization professionally. Excellent point. Thank you, Dan. Sure. So when you think about technology, um, it's great in many respects, but technology, particularly computers, require a lot of energy. The power to um, turn these computers on and to keep them running, but then also um, computers give off a lot of heat, and so we need to often put them in controlled environments where we are cooling rooms. So the more computers we have running, the more power we're consuming and the more cooling we need, which adds to our power consumption. So if we think about opportunities to reduce power consumption, but not necessarily our computing power or capabilities, we can look at uh, possibly uh, what they call server virtu virtualization, which means instead of having, for example, a server that runs your point of sale system and a separate server to run your sales and catering system and yet another server to run your property management system, you might be able to buy one large souped up server and host all of these applications on the same machine, thereby saving both energy and reducing your cooling requirements. Um, but yet another approach would be to use cloud computing. And in cloud computing, it takes a lot of the technology requirements off the property and puts them into some kind of regional or central location. And again, it's got the similar concept of sharing servers. Um, but one thing for you in particular is that by using the cloud, you're transferring some of your own energy costs to somebody else. Um, and hopefully, because they're sharing computers and uh, creating environments that are good for these computers to run and do so in a more efficient manner, they might be able to do better and ultimately create a more positive effect or, or less of a negative impact on the environment. So these are some opportunities. Um, in addition with cloud computing, there's some benefits because it takes a lot of fixed cost when it comes to technology, the, the capital expenditures, and changes them to more of a ongoing transactional cost. So it makes it more affordable, at least on the front end, for companies to get access to technology and the capabilities they need. Um, and yet it puts the technology management in the hands of professionals who are, are really trained on things like the maintenance of the hardware, doing system backups, making sure that there's ironclad security and things like that. So there are a lot of other benefits to using cloud computing than just simply saving energy. Um, but nonetheless, it's an important thing for us to call out because as you look at trying to reduce your energy costs, 
this is a very viable way now that companies are turning to um, in order to meet that goal as well as solve some of their other operational goals when it comes to technology management. So that is a, ter a very important area to look at. But then we take it to the next step because now we have, let's say, gone from paper to electronic. But what about that waste? Because devices have a lifespan. And we go through a lot of electronics in our hotels. We're upgrading our televisions, and we have computers, and we have printers. So what happens with e-waste? This is an important category as well. One example is, is locating and finding a reliable, trustworthy company to handle your e-waste. Uh, we found one in particular. They are the official e-waste processor for the Dallas Mavericks and some other uh, reputable companies uh, around the, uh, the United States. And they are, exist in other locations around the world as well. Be aware, and we have a link on the page here to a CBS News broadcast, which we will not be showing during today's session, but strongly encourage you to view. There have been cases where companies and individuals uh, believed they were working with a reputable e-waste facility, and in fact, they were not, and it was being shipped and dumped um, in landfills overseas. This is an important topic, and if we're being very sincere about m reducing the waste that we have and how things are handled, we need to look at all fronts, guest consumption, employee, internal consumption, and then ultimately what we do with our e-waste. So please take a moment after you've had a chance to um, watch, be part of this webinar, and view this video. It's very powerful. Dan, anything on the topic of waste before we move on? Can you hear me? Yes, Dan, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. sorry. Um, yeah, I wanted to say a couple of things here. I think this is important. So what we try at the University of Denver to instill in our students that, you know, while capitalism is great, you know, we need to think about, um, you know, sustainability and uh, what we call conscious capitalism. And part of that certainly is about making money, but you can only make money if you can sustain it. And Part of that for particularly hospitality and tourism is a focus on the environment. Um, so the other parts of that are, you know, the people and the planet. And, you know, hotels, restaurants, and other hospitality venues produce a lot of waste for a variety of reasons. And yet there are a lot of simple things that could be done to reduce and control waste. And making, you know, some of it's training guests you know, so Naomi mentioned the Starwood example where they had an option you could save some money or get um, a benefit in their operation if you elected to um, not use all of their services and save on some of the housekeeping. And that's a great win for everybody. The property wins because their costs go down. The guest wins because um, there's an incentive. And furthermore, by getting the, you know, giving a small token of appreciation to go patronize another part of the operation, um, the operation is going to end up making more money because the guest is going to spend some money beyond that uh, token gift that was provided. Uh, but the main thing is that there's got to be training. And I'll tell you an example. I was in a kitchen operation the other day, and they were getting ready to serve um, basically mock cocktails. And the, Mark cocktail involved some kind of punch mixed with ginger ale. And they were lining up all the glasses, and they had these cans of ginger ale. They weren't even full cans, weren't 12-ounce cans. They were smaller. I'm not sure why that is. But nonetheless, they were opening these cans and throwing them right into the trash. And I made some comments. I said, hey, you've got to think about my kids and the future of the planet saves, you know, the recycle. And the response right now. And it was probably the... the most uninformed and the most incorrect response that one could have had. Now, it would have been nice to say, oh, we're going to, after we do this, we're going to go through and filter out the cans and recycle them. But it would have been no extra effort to put a, um, a recycle bin right there for them to drop the cans in. And when it comes to things 
things about disposing, whether it's of cans or paper or technology, we need to think about are we doing so in an educated manner, in a responsible manner? And that comes down to training, training both our employees and training our guests. And to then hold, you know, provide incentives, but also have accountability in place. Um, you know, people are, they want to keep up with the Joneses. They want to have the latest and greatest technology. So if every 12 months or 18 months they're uh, refreshing their technology, we have to think about where does this go? This is important for us to think about. So um, again, training programs are very, very important, and then educating customers in different ways. When we also look at another thing that strikes me with, um, I stay at a lot of different hotels. Some hotels have become more proactive, and um, instead of giving guests individual um, amenities, the shampoo and the soap and all that, they now have large dispensers that are you know, high quality products, nicely displayed, um, and it, it reduces the amount of waste because these little bottles aren't used once or twice and then thrown away. I'm amazed at some of the hotels I stay at. The, you know, they give you a big bar of soap and then every day they refresh it with a brand new bar of soap. Um, and it just seems like it's very frivolous. And I think there are a lot of ways that we can look at these little things and say, how can we do a better job of, um, you know, reducing our waste because we're, we're buying and dispensing these amenities in a more economical manner. So a lot of things there to think about. Um, but again, it comes down to studying the operation, thinking about the opportunities where savings can be occur occurring, and then making sure people are well informed. And That's building you know. on that very comment, Dan, of being well informed brings us right to the marketing of it. As you talked about the the um, the meetings and the the groups, we're going to get into that now and see how important this is. That not only we have these practices, but that we are effectively marketing them. So a couple of quick statistics: um, it's been shown the effect on guest reviews. Uh, ha hotels that have more green programs that have the certifications, they are getting higher rank ratings and rankings than hotels without. Looking at the event planning side, 79% of event planners would avoid a destination or venue with a poor environmental record. So this is something that is, you know, we look at the transient side of our business. We have guests individually that are looking for more green opportunities, and we're going to see that in just a moment. But if we look at the group side of our business, companies are, are outside of our industry are getting very focused on green. And this is something that they are being um, held accountable for themselves. So when they do have meetings, we have some examples here. One, there's websites dedicated to finding the best places to meet green and see how locations are rated and ranked. Uh, going right back to what you talked about with the city of Denver, Dan. And then we see that at, from the meeting planner perspective, they're looking to have that zero waste mentality and philosophy. And this Go, requires pr careful planning, making sure that anything that is utilized, signage, etc., is biodegradable, it's reusable, it's recyclable, and that there's the printing and the, the paper waste consumption is being eliminated. We see examples of that. Uh, one is a great one that comes from Oracle and their open world annual event. Simple things that they're looking for, for is how they handle their signage and for water. So no longer is the emphasis on our you know, catering departments to upsell bottles of water. Instead, companies are looking for uh, replacing those bottles of water in with, uh, with pitchers and jugs. In this case, they instead of have, using 500,000 bottles of water, they actually, the switch saved them $1.5 million, which was reinvested in the event. So the companies that utilize our hotels are looking for greener practices, and as at the meeting planner level, this is what they're looking for. So that makes us, again, come back to the websites of the companies and say, okay, well, what are we doing? And of course, Marriott is at the forefront. Uh, they have some terrific information on eco-meetings and eco-planning. Uh, one thing that they do is they've eliminated, eliminated tablecloths 
on their meeting tables. That means no hot water or electricity to wash them, dry them, iron them. They're using the, the water pitchers versus the bottled waters. Uh, and many other steps. And there's some terrific information. In fact, we have a screenshot on the lower left here showing their green meeting planning site. However, and this is where we're encouraging the industry to put this conversation more on the forefront of, of our website. To get to that, we have to go through the corporate responsibility links at the bottom of the page, and then we find that. Whereas if we click simply on meetings and events, we don't get that information. So as we look at the different opportunities to move the conversation forward, we see guests are demanding it, meeting planners are demanding it. Let's move the green to the front of the conversation. Our websites, our companies, they have great information. But to find it, you have to go to the bottom of, of the website pages, click on corporate, click on corporate responsibility, and then search for it from there. And we can see this shift taking place. Here's an example of what TripAdvisor has now done. Now, we all know how important TripAdvisor is for a business. Note this. They have a green leaders program. And now, as part of the search and results, Earlier, we pulled up some hotels in San Francisco. And notice the category right here. Out of the 236 hotels, 36 of them are labeled green. And it's labeled if the hotel is green or not. Marketing green, having the practices in place, is going to control our costs, reduce our consumption. And marketing it properly now is generating more green for our businesses. So before I go on, um, Dan, let's, would you please chime in on this subject between the meeting side of it and the transient side and the marketing? As I mentioned before, you know, the meeting planners are putting this into their, you know, something about environmental sustainability and recycling programs into the request for proposal. We also need to look at the consumers of the guest rooms. And, you know, by and large, we see an increase in millennials. Um, who are now of uh, discretionary purchasing power making important decisions about where they're staying, whether it's business trips, family leisure trips, um, or to even decisions for their companies, perhaps regarding negotiating policies uh, as part of procurement where business travel will occur in, in their companies. And as I said before, the environment is very important to them. So they are... Um, considerations into their business decision making. Now what's important, we've talked about a lot of different ways to um, you know, employ some best practices that we've seen across the industry to save money. But the other part is to look at how you can monetize and communicate what you're doing to um, attract new uh, business or to build your business. And, you know, some of these initiatives may cost some money up front. There may be some investment that people need to focus on. And what we are finding is that consumers are willing to pay a premium, a slight premium, if they know that a company is doing good and has great practices in place. So the question then becomes how do meeting planners, the decision makers, of these big purchase decisions are aware and making decisions in a responsible manner. And so when you think about many consumers today, they might go to an online travel agency, for example, and search on a hotel in a given city, and then they get kind of side-by-side -side comparisons, you know, product A, product B, product C, and the consumers are trying to make a delineation of what's different about each property over another and what is the value proposition. And if they look at just price alone, it may not tell the whole story. So we need to think about how a property can sell its green initiatives. Now, there are some efforts being um, implemented within the industry today. Um, we just had on the screen what Priceline is doing, the I Stay Green. Um, but the problem with that is that it's, um, it's a special search engine. So consumers who are... Uh, if you will, kind of the, the green travelers, and that's a growing segment of people. Um, or, you know, there's, we've in the past used the term eco-travel. Um, you know, they'd have to call up this search engine 
separately. And I think what we need to do is find ways that this becomes more mainstream, that when you search for a property in a given city, it comes up and it starts telling consumers different information about maybe their commitment to sustainability in the environment, their carbon footprint, um, you know, how good or bad a property is. That sense of accountability will be important to move the industry uh, in kind of a, a leapfrog manner to, to make some giant strides, um, but it would be an opportunity for those who are on the leading edge to really shine and be more competitive. Um, the Seaport Hotel in Boston, uh, which this example shows, is a really great example of focusing on its commitment on the environment, green, and trying to communicate right front and center to its guests, to its meeting planners, what some of its efforts are doing. Um, and I think that increasingly um, sustainability and social responsibility, well, many companies have these reports and they put them somewhere on their website, often they're embedded. And this is now something that's um, more of a priority in people's thinking when they're making purchase decisions. So it shouldn't be relegated to the back page, so to speak. It needs to be front and center. Ultimately, not being green is costing you green when we are not energy efficient, when we are not water efficient, when we are wasteful, uh, whether it be with paper or electronics or whatever the case may be. If we are not being green, we are essentially flushing that money down the toilet. So to be green in 2014 and moving forward, we need to be looking at what our opportunities are as we move forward. And individually, each one of our hotels we see that the, the, especially the larger brands, they comprise a mass amount of numbers around the world. But it takes each individual, whether it be owned, managed, franchised, to, to take the steps that we can. There are things that we can't all do, but there are certainly things that we can do that we haven't done yet. And so that's the message today, is to be the change that you actually want to see in the world. So ask yourself, as we wrap up here, what else can we do at my property? What resonated with me from this presentation? Is it maybe considering renewable energy? Is it maybe looking for more energy efficient options, uh, smart thermostats? Or a quick example from that I was at a, a hotel in Dallas recently at the Omni. And the coolest thing to me was that I had to use my key to power up and power down my room. I loved that. Don't ask me what kind of television was in the room, but I, if my key wasn't in that room, I, the power went down. And that felt good, knowing when I left the room, I didn't forget to leave a light on. I didn't um, leave any power on. The room was shut down. So those are great options. Look, potentially, would working with a green coach help to maximize your opportunities through rebates or other incentive options? How can you reduce waste, um, whether it's by donating your used soap and amenities? Or internal, could you go paperless in departments that are not yet paperless, such as housekeeping and maintenance? And then whatever it is that you're doing, market it. Put your green front and center on the website, on your communication, and that will generate more green for you. And the biggest part of it is making a commitment. There are some great resources on so many websites, and one of them on Energy Star, you know, they said the number one thing is you have to make a commitment to do it. That's step one. So we ask you today to consider what area fits with you. I'm sure you're doing something already, or you wouldn't have even been on today's call. But now what else can you do? What's next? If you take these steps, you will see the change within 2014 and your, your fiscal year this year, as well as moving forward. Uh, we really want to thank Dan for taking his time today and being part of this presentation. We appreciate Hotel Logics for, for sponsoring it and, and facilitating it today. And we really appreciate everyone's participation in taking time out of your schedule because it truly is a very important topic and so much that we can do uh, on a global scale that, that no other industry has the opportunity that hospitality does. So, Thank you so very kindly. And Dan, any concluding comments from you? Thank you, Naomi. Thank you to all of our attendees for participating in today's webinar. I'd like to throw out the challenge that um, Naomi was alluding to. And you know, with all the great things you're doing, keep it up. But ask yourselves, 
and when you have your staff meetings, ask your staff, what's one more thing that we can do? How can we pick one more opportunity? And if we keep every day challenging ourselves to find one more thing, we'll continue to get better and better and better and be more responsible to the environment. And if you remember, hospitality and tourism is so dependent on the environment our, national, our, our natural treasures and destinations to be effective. So we have a lot of vested interest in this because the future of our world, the future of our business is at stake here. And as we conclude, I want you to think about, um, I once was um, in a, you know, heard a sermon and the priest had a children's liturgy. And he called all the kids up and sit in front of the altar and he asked the kids, you know, what's the most important symbol here in the church? And there was a pregnant pause, and then finally one young girl raised her hand all excited. And she said, I know, Father, it's the doors. And the father was, the priest was kind of stupefied. He couldn't understand, but everybody in the audience laughed. And he thought about it, and he was trying to figure out how he was going to recover. And when you think about a church, you know, there are all kinds of religious artifacts and stained glass windows and things, but why did this girl pick the door? And so the priest decided, all right, I'm going to go with this, I'm going to probe. And he asked the little girl, he says, well, that's an interesting answer, could you explain more? And she said, well, the reason I picked the door is because what's most important isn't what happens in this church. What's most important is when we go out that door, what do we do? What do we do with he after hearing the message and things? And I think for us, that's the real takeaway here. You've heard a lot about different practices, different best practices that hotels are using. What can you take away from this? What can you do differently at your place of work to make a difference? So I, I challenge you on that. I wish you well on your different efforts and initiatives. And uh, I hope that you've enjoyed our time together. Thank you for participating. Thank you for allowing us to share our ideas and expertise.